Welcome to our second video on electrochemistry. The subject of this video will be galvanic cells. They're also known as voltaic cells, but I will refer to them as a galvanic cell. When you hear the phrase galvanic cell, I want you to think the term battery. Okay, what do we know about a battery? Well, it produces electricity. What's inside of a battery is a spontaneous reduction oxidation reaction. Electrons are being transferred, and we're using those pa the passage of those electrons, the current, to do work. So here we go. Here's the galvanic cell. It houses a spontaneous redox reaction. As we just stated, it produces an electric current. It's going to have a positive potential energy voltage that we will designate as E super zero cell. And it involves what we call indirect electron transfer. Again, we've talked about this, it's a battery. This salt bridge completes the circuit and maintains charge neutrality in the half cells. Here's our basic design. We have these two half cells, as we see here on the right of the screen. These electrodes are connected externally by a wire connecting one half cell to the other. We're passing the wire through a voltmeter so that we can read the voltage here on the meter. It will give us the cell potential. One half cell houses the oxidation, half reaction, and one will house the reduction half reaction. And by convention, we always write oxidation on the left and reduction on the right. We call this electrode on the left the anode, and we label it with a negative sign. The electrode on the left we call the cathode, and we label it with a positive sign. You know those prefixes an and cat from our terms anion and cation. So you can remember the anode has a negative charge just like an anion has a negative charge. The cathode has a positive charge just like the cathode has a positive charge. One thing I need to note, when you look at a battery either in your car or in one of your electronic devices, it will have a positive and a negative. Those are external labels and are exactly the opposite of what we write. Those external labels deal with potential or with current. And the positive is the hot side. That's where the electrons are coming from. And the negative is the low potential side of where the electrons are going to. We use charge labels because we know that electrons have a negative charge and they're going to pass from the anode to the cathode because we're dealing with internal labels or the chemical labels. Here on the right again is a blank diagram of the galvanic cell. I've noted specifically the anode and the cathode, negative and positive, as we were just talking about. And let's look at an example reaction and let's label it fully. Okay, Our two half reactions are zinc goes to zinc 2 and produces two electrons. Copper consumes two electrons. Copper ion goes consumes two electrons and goes to solid copper. So this is the anode. So this is zinc, and my solution here is zinc 2 aqueous. My cathode here is copper, and my solution here is copper 2 plus aqueous. And again, let's notice that the electron flow is always anode to cathode. That's the direction of electron flow. This half reaction again, this is zinc, gives up two electrons to become zinc 2 plus. That's oxidation. That's always on the left of my cell. And on the right 
cell, you have copper 2 plus gaining two electrons to become copper metal. That's gain of electrons. That's a reduction. Now, under standard conditions, which are 25C, 298 Kelvin, all concentrations, one molar, all gas pressures, one atmosphere, this cell has a standard potential of 1.1 volts. We would say then that the standard cell potential for this reaction as listed is positive 1.1 volts. Let me note, a galvanic cell is always going to have a positive potential because it is a spontaneous reaction. Now, to write this cell out as we have it here on the right-hand side of the slide takes a long time, uses up a lot of space. We've developed a shorthand notation for the cell which looks like this. Here you have zinc going to zinc 2, just as we had here. You have copper 2 going to copper, just as we had here. Notice that the left-hand side of the shorthand is the same as the left-hand side of the full drawing. The right-hand side of the shorthand is the same as the right-hand side of the full cell depiction. The single line lets us know that the zinc and the zinc 2 plus solution are in direct contact. The double line in the middle of the cell notation indicates the indirect contact by the salt bridge or by the external wire between the two half cells. Let's look at another reaction. Here's another reaction of a vol of galvanic cell. In this case, our reaction is zinc metal reacts with aqueous acid, H+, to make zinc 2 plus and hydrogen gas. And here are our two half reactions. Again, zinc goes to zinc 2, so that's an oxidation. So I can label my anode as zinc and a zinc 2 plus solution. My right-hand half reaction is 2H plus plus 2 electrons makes hydrogen gas, and that's a cathode. That's my reduction. So over here, my electrode is actually going to be platinum because I can't make an electrode. I don't have solid hydrogen, so I need just a piece of metal what we would call an inert electrode that does not actively participate in the reaction. We would also indicate that H2 gas is bubbling into the solution from some sort of tank. So I've got H2 gas here. It's bubbling in. I have H plus aqueous in my solution. Now under this, uh, this cell under standard conditions, which would be one molar zinc, one molar hydrogen, and one atmosphere of hydrogen gas, pardon me, one molar uh, H plus proton, and one atmosphere of hydrogen gas. Under those conditions, my standard cell potential is a plus 0.76 volts. And here's my shorthand notation. Notice again here on the right-hand side that both the H plus and the H2 are listed together because they're in the beaker, and the platinum metal, the inert electrode, is in contact with them. Let's look at one more example. Here is a reaction between hydrogen gas and copper metal, which will form aqueous protons and copper metal. My two reactions are hydrogen gas plus two, uh, pardon me, hydrogen gas is converted to two H plus ions and two electrons. That's the anode. That's my oxidation. Once again, we're going to need a platinum electrode. Inert, so my anode here is going to be platinum, 
my solution is going to be aqueous H+. Plus. We're going to set up a standard cell, so that's going to be one molar. And once again, we're going to bubble our hydrogen gas into this, and we'll do it at a pressure of one atmosphere. My other half reaction is copper 2 plus, going, uh, gaining two electrons to become copper metal. So this electrode is solid copper, and this solution is copper 2 aqueous 1 atmosphere. So that's aqueous copper 2. And my shorthand notation for this cell is given here. Again, platinum in contact with the solution containing aqueous proton and the H2 gas. Now, under these standard conditions, the standard cell potential here is a plus 0.34 volts. Now, these numbers for standard for the standard cell potentials that I've been given you, uh, we've simply looked those up in a table or we've done them by experiment. But for right now, you just need to know that those numbers are given. While we speak of a galvanic cell in terms of half cells, we need to remember that reduction and oxidation must occur together. One gains, the other loses. But, so we cannot measure just the potential of one half cell. We can measure the potential of the entire cell. So what we need to do is to set a standard reduction against which we will compare all others. We need to define a, define a zero point. Now, this is very much like we do altitude. We define sea level to be zero feet, and then we measure all other altitudes relative to that. For instance, the altitude of Lubbock is listed as plus 3,300 feet, or 3,300 feet above sea level. Similarly, Denver is 5,300 feet above sea level. Death Valley has an altitude of negative 200 feet, or in other words, it's 200 feet below sea level. Now, once we have a zero sea level, in this case, defined, we can then talk about the altitude difference between any two places by just taking the difference between those two places. Notice this is just like we did in thermodynamics, products minus reactants, or in this side, right minus left. In this case, right minus left. So if my reaction is going from Lubbock to Denver, then my change in altitude, delta A, would just be the altitude of Denver minus the altitude of Lubbock, which in this case would be 5,300 minus 3,300, or plus 2,000 feet. If I reversed my reaction, quote-unquote, or reversed my trip, I would come back from Denver to Lubbock, and I would come down those 2,000 feet. We're simply going to do the same thing with the electrical potential or voltage in the half cells. Again, because we cannot measure the potential of one half reaction, we are going to define a zero point. That zero point that we choose to define is called the standard hydrogen electrode, or the SHE. It is as follows. This is when we have aqueous acid at one molar, gaining two electrons to become hydrogen gas, and that hydrogen gas will be kept at a pressure of one atmosphere. And we define that reduction potential for that half cell to be exactly zero volts. Or in other words, we say that the standard reduction potential for the SHE is exactly zero volts. This allows us then to link the standard hydrogen electrode with any other half reaction and see how it compares. If it has a greater potential, we would give it a positive reduction potential. 
On the other hand, if it has a lesser reduction potential than the SHE, we would give it a negative potential, just like we do with altitude. The overall cell potential is always going to be the right-hand side minus the left-hand side, or the cathode side minus the anode side. This is an important equation for you to remember. Now again, notice that whenever we reference a half reaction to the SHE, we will always write both half cells as a reduction and assign then a standard reduction potential. We'll know which way the reaction goes by knowing relatively those half cell potentials. Let's go back and look at that second cell that we looked at, that of zinc reacting with acid to form zinc-2 ions and hydrogen gas. Now again, notice my two half reactions are zinc being oxidized to zinc-2 plus and two electrons, and hydrogen, pardon me, and protons, H plus, being reduced to hydrogen gas. That's the cathode. Now that is the standard hydrogen electrode, SHE. We know that its reduction potential is exactly zero because we've defined it that way. Now this cell, as it's set up, has a measured standard potential of 0.76 volts. And since cell potential is always right minus left or cathode minus anode, in this case, the measured potential of 0.76 volts is the SHE minus the zinc reduction potential, or zero minus that zinc. Since point seven, positive 0.76 is negative E0 for the zinc, the reduction potential, the standard reduction potential for the zinc is a negative 0.76 volts. What we're saying then is that zinc 2 has a standard reduction potential to zinc of 0.76 volts below that of the SHE. So we would write this standard reduction and it has a standard reduction potential of negative 0.76 volts. The third example that we looked at earlier was hydrogen gas reacting with copper ion to form aqueous acid and copper metal. Now, notice that my two half reactions this time are Hydrogen gas goes to aqueous acid plus two electrons. That's an oxidation. Notice that that is the SHE reversed. Okay, It's not a reduction. It's the oxidation. We've reversed that reaction. The copper, two, going to copper metal, gaining two electrons, that's my cathode reaction. So I've indicated that over here on the right-hand side of the screen. Now again, in terms of reduction potentials, the cell potential is going to be the right side minus the left side, or the cathode minus the anode. In this case, this has a measured potential of 0.34 volts. So 0.34 volts is going to be my right-hand side, the copper, minus the left-hand side, which is the standard hydrogen electrode. That turns out to the 0.34 then is the copper 2 standard reduction potential minus zero because we defined the standard reduction potential of the SHE to be zero. And so my standard reduction potential for copper is a positive 0.34 volts. So again, in this example, the standard reduction of Cu to Cu plus 2 to Cu has a potential of 0.34 volts above that of the SHE. And so we would write this standard reduction, the standard reduction of copper 2 plus is copper 2 plus aqueous 
going to two electrons, pardon me, plus two electrons goes to copper metal. And the standard reduction potential for that electrode is a positive 0.34 volts. We now have these three half cells, these three reductions defined. Here is my standard hydrogen electrode. In the last example, we saw that copper is 0.34 volts above the SHE. In the example prior to that, we saw that zinc is 0.76 volts below that. Again, the joke is copper is 0.34 volts above she level, and the zinc is 0.76 volts below she level. We're just using that standard hydrogen electrode as our zero and measuring everything else relative to it. Now, let's go back and look at our original example reaction, which was zinc metal reacting with copper 2 plus to give us zinc ion and copper metal. And the measured potential of the cell is 1.1 volts. Now, my two half reactions are zinc going to zinc 2 plus and copper 2 plus going to copper. So that means my anode reaction is zinc and my cathode reaction involves copper. My standard cell potential is always cathode minus anode. Let's plug in the numbers from at the top. The cathode potential, which is copper 2 going to copper, is positive 0.34. The zinc potential, which is zinc 2 plus going to zinc, is negative 0.76. If we do the math, we get 1.1 volts, and that is exactly our measured value. On the left-hand side of our slide here is a table of standard reduction potentials. It's not all of them. It's just a few that I have listed to give us a chance to look at this. You'll notice here in the middle is our standard hydrogen electrode, and I've listed seven or eight species that have a more positive reduction potential and seven or eight species that have a more negative or lower reduction potential. Let's notice... Anything higher in the table will be reduced if it's put in a cell with anything below it. So anything high in the table will be reduced. It will oxidize anything below it. So at the top of the table, we have high reduction potential. And at the bottom, we have low reduction potential. That means things at the top of the table are going to be reduced. So these are good oxidizing agents. And at the bottom of the table are our good reducing agents agents. Things at the bottom of the table are not likely to be reduced, so they are likely to be oxidized, give up electrons, so that makes them good reducing agents. Let's consider about three examples of half reactions, and let's determine, looking at the table, which will be reduced, that is to say, which will serve as the cathode in a galvanic cell, and which will be oxidized which will serve as the anode. So let's look at silver plus going to silver and lead plus going to lead. If we find those in the table, silver has a potential of positive 0.8 and lead 2 has a potential of negative 0.13. Notice that this is more positive. The silver potential is more positive and therefore, that is going to be my cathode. My cathode is always going to be the one with the more positive reduction potential. So in this case, the silver will be the cathode, 
and the lead, the anode. The net reaction, okay, now again, we're going to multiply the silver reaction by two so we can get the electrons to match. The net reaction is going to be two silver ions plus lead metal react to give us two moles of silver metal and a mole of lead ions. Now, please note, the lead reaction has been reversed since it serves as the anode, and that is oxidation. We always compare these by looking at them as reductions, but we know that the cathode will be reduced and the anode will be oxidized. Here's a second example. Let's look at silver again, but let's compare it to gold. Here is the silver reduction. It has a reduction potential of 0.8. And here is gold. It has a reduction potential of positive 1.42. In this case, this, the gold, will be my cathode because it has a more positive standard reduction potential. So the gold here will be cathode and the silver will be the anode. The net reaction, again, multiplying silver by three, the net reaction is gold three plus, plus three silver, react to give me gold metal and three silver cations. Again, note, the silver reaction has been reversed since it serves as the cathode, pardon me, the anode, the oxidation half reaction. One more example. Let's look at aluminum and lead. Here's aluminum way down here. It has a reduction potential of negative 1.66 volts. And here is lead right below the SHE, it has a potential of negative 0.13 volts. So in this case, we would argue that the lead is the cathode because it has a more positive potential than aluminum. Remember, things higher in the table are, be, are reduced, things lower in the table will be oxidized when they are put together in a galvanic cell. So in this case, lead will be the cathode and aluminum the anode. Here is my net reaction. Again, notice we'll multiply the lead reaction by three and multiply the aluminum reaction by two so that we get to six electrons each way. My net reaction is 3 lead 2 plus, plus 2 aluminum, give me 3 lead metals and 2 aluminum ions. And again, one more time, we've reversed the aluminum half reaction to show that it is indeed an oxidation because oxidation occurs at the anode. Let's go back and look at all three of those galvanic cells one more time, and let's now calculate the standard cell potential. Our first one was silver versus lead. And again, let's notice that's more positive, so that's the cathode. What's my standard cell potential? Cathode minus anode. In this case, positive 0.8 minus a negative 0.13 or 0.93 volts. Again, that's greater than zero. E cell for a galvanic cell is greater than zero. It's going to be positive. That means spontaneous reaction. A galvanic cell is always going to have a positive cell potential because it always houses a spontaneous reaction. Here was my second pair between silver and gold. In this case, gold was my cathode because it had a more positive potential. Cell potential is always cathode minus anode. In this case, positive 1.42 minus a positive 0.8 or a difference of 0.62 volts. So this cell would have a standard potential of 0.62 volts. The third pair we looked at was aluminum and lead. 
Again, the lead was the more positive. Our potential is going to be, we have an error here. Let's fix this. This is going to be negative 0.13 minus a negative 1.66 or a positive 1.53 volts. Say positive 1.53 volts. Again, let's note the cell potential is always going to be positive because that implies a spontaneous reaction, and that's what galvanic cells house, a spontaneous reaction. If you calculate a standard cell potential and it's negative, the most likely cause is that you have simply reversed the labels on the cathode and the anode. Go back and check. Let's now quickly explore the relationship between the free energy change for a reaction and the cell potential for that reaction. It may be shown that the free energy change is equal to negative NFE, where N is the number of electrons transferred in the balanced cell reaction. F is Faraday's constant, which is the charge carried by one mole of electrons. F is 96,485 coulombs per mole. I also point out to you that one volt times one coulomb is one joule. This is my standard cell potential, which we saw earlier, and this is the free energy for the reaction. Now, here are the three cells from the previous slide, silver and lead, silver and gold, and lead and aluminum. In the first case, in the first case, our cell potential was 0.93 volts. N is equal to 2, 2 electrons going from lead to lead 2 plus. And so the free energy is going to be minus NFE, which is negative 2. F is given at 96,485 coulombs per mole. And the voltage is 0.93 volts. That converts then to 1.8 times 10 to the fourth joules or negative 180 kilojoules. Notice that the cell potential is positive, so the free energy is negative, indicating a spontaneous reaction. In our second example, the cell potential was 0.62 volts. N is 3. Again, that's a 3-electron process to go from 3 plus to nothing. So N is 3, so delta G is going to be negative 3 times 96.45 times 0.62, which also by chance turned out to be 1.8 times 10 to the fourth or negative 180 kilojoules again. Again, please note, that is just pure chance that, those, that the uh, free energy of those two reactions happen to be the same. Our last example was lead two reacting with aluminum to form lead metal and aluminum three plus ions. That cell potential corrected was 1.53 volts. In here is 6. Notice I've got two aluminums going to two aluminums 3 plus. So to do that, I need to lose 6 electrons. So N is 6. So delta G is going to be negative 6 times 96485 times 1.53 volts or negative 8.85 times 10 to the fifth joules or negative 885 kilojoules. Notice then that the galvanic cells, a galvanic cells have a positive cell potential and a negative free energy. Both of these indicate a spontaneous reaction. And from last chapter on thermodynamics, we also note that when we have a spontaneous reaction, the equilibrium is greater than one, and that means that that favors products. I apologize for the typos in this, but again, maybe by pointing the typos out, showing you my mistakes, you will not make the same ones. The last thing we want to note about galvanic cells is this. As the reaction occurs, we begin standard state at one molar. As the reaction occurs, those concentrations are going to change. And because those concentrations change, the voltage changes. 
if we combine the equation for free energy and cell potential and free energy and equilibrium constant, we can derive this equation called the Nernst equation. I'm not showing it to you. If you want to see it, come by my office in the fall and we'll, uh, we'll give it a look. Here is the reaction, though. The non-standard cell potential is equal to the standard cell potential minus RT divided by NF, all multiplied by the logarithm of Q, where R is the thermodynamic constant, T is Kelvin temperature, N again is the number of electrons transferred in the balanced redox reaction, F is Faraday's constant, and Q is the reaction quotient. Again, that's just products over reactants. We introduced that in our chapters on equilibrium. You may need to go back and look at that. Remember, it has the same form. Q has the same form as KEQ, products over reactants, but it uses non-standard or non-equilibrium conditions, concentrations, or pressures. Let's look at one example using the Nernst equation, and then we'll draw this video to a close. Let's calculate the cell potential of this reaction under the conditions given. Notice we're given the standard cell potential and the following concentrations. The gold concentration is 0.5, the silver concentration is 0.2, and the temperature is 298. Let's form Q. Notice Q is going to be products, silver, over reactants, gold. We raise the silver concentration to the third power because it has a coefficient of 3. The gold concentration is raised to the first power because its coefficient is 1. Q then is going to be 0.2 to the third power divided by 0.5, which is 0.016. The log of Q is the log of 0.016 or negative 4.135. Let's now plug everything into the Nernst equation. Our standard cell potential is given as 0.62. R is 8.3144 joules per Kelvin. This is my temperature at 298 Kelvin. N is 6 electrons. And... Faraday's constant was given on the last slide as 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. Joules divided by coulombs gives me volts. Doing the math gives me 0.62 minus a negative 0.018, or my cell is 0 .6, 0 0.064 volts is my cell potential. Here's another set of conditions. What if we raise the temperature to 500 Kelvin? So same numbers, except we've changed our temperature to 500 Kelvin. We do the math again. That turns out to be 0 0.62 minus a negative 0 0.03, or giving us a cell potential of 0 0.065. Notice this, and that's the last conclusion we want to come to that cell potential will increase as the temperature increases. This concludes our discussion of galvanic cells. Our third and final video on electrochemistry will involve electrolytic cells and electrolysis.